Jared Poland Frono's photo.com. I'm here with Mike. Mike, how are you today? I'm doing very well. So Mike, you. you sent me a, a Skype message. What did you want me to help you with? Well, I'm going to be shooting uh, a U of M hockey game and I got some credentials after sending in a request form and didn't think I was going to actually get the okay to do that, but they said yes. And now that they said yes, I'm wondering what exactly that's going to be all about. Okay. So I'm hoping you could give me some advice. Right, which school is that? It's uh, University of Michigan. Oh, it's good hockey. <laughs> yeah, good that's, hockey. That's good hockey. <laughs> yeah. Michigan's always one of the top teams in the uh, Frozen Four or whatever, yes. right? Yes. Um, do you have to give them anything? Uh, what do you mean? Like. They're just giving you credentials, and that was it. Uh, yeah, I kind of, you know, I, I talked to the uh, person in charge over there, and they don't normally do this, but he kind of, out of the goodness of his heart, said I could do one game and hey. for my portfolio type stuff. Awesome. That Well, that's great. That's what you need is somebody to give you a break. So you yeah. said there's a penalty box with no glass? Well, that's that's actually, I was talking about my son's games. That's what I've been shooting. Oh, okay. Glass and my son's games. And I know they have glass at there. So, so they have glass, but do they have uh, photo holes? No, they don't. They don't have any photo holes? No, I think uh, around here the only place that has that is the uh, NHL stuff. So Detroit okay. Rebels have those, but well, not. All right, what are you shooting with? Uh, D700. Okay. Uh, 7200 VR2 uh -huh. and 24 to 70. Okay. Uh, do you know what kind of glass they have down there around the rink? Uh, it's, is it partitioned, or does it have the uh, the 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 seamless glass? It's partitioned, as far as I know. All right, you're gonna want to find the cleanest area possible. Yeah, like big. what I ran into last year, trouble with at the Flyers game was when I was in the back behind the net. It's double thick glass back there because that's obviously where they get more shots and more shots miss the net and it takes a beating. So what happened is if you use a 70 to 200, you could not get anything in focus because of the double thick glass was just messing with um, everything. Uh, so I don't know how the, the glass is at your particular arena, but I used to shoot through the glass all the time at the flyers along the sides. Um, Depending on where they put, do you get to pick where you get to shoot from, or are they going to tell you where? Um, yeah, I'm still waiting on the details for that. Well, let's just go over basic settings and basic things to look uh, uh, look for. Um, okay. How bright is this arena? Not very bright. Sorry. Not very bright. Ugh. Yeah. Instantly, yeah, we know yeah. ISO is going to have to go up. What was that? Worst case scenario is probably in this ring. <laughs> yeah, but you have a D700, so, yeah, so I can go a little higher. You can go ISO. a little higher. So. Yeah. Without knowing anything about this arena, we, I'm just going to jump off right off the bat and say 2,500 ISO. Okay. All right. That's not a bad place. The D3, the D700 should be fine up to about 4,000. So we're going to be, we're going to start around 2,500 just, just to see what happens there. Your goal is to get one four hundredth of a second at say 2.8 or 3.2 if you can. Okay. The reason that's your goal is because 400th of a second should freeze most of the action. 500th would be even better. Um, but, yeah, you want to you wanna be able to freeze them as much as possible. So here's what you're going to look at. If you see 2,500 ISO and, you know, how are you going to – you're going to do manual exposure, right? Absolutely. Yeah, manual sure. exposure because for everybody out there, if you're shooting hockey, the exposure has to be manual because if it's not manual, you're going to get a reading off the ice, which is just going to throw off your meter and make everything too dark. Basically, in layman's terms, if you're metering for the ice, your shutter speed is going to go way up because it's going to think that it's too bright. And when it goes way up and you take a picture, it's going to be underexposed, meaning it's going to come out too dark. There's not going to be any information there. So that's why you want to meter yourself. Uh, I don't worry about the ice blowing out too much. I mean, you, it really shouldn't when you're shooting at 500th of a second. Um, you should be fine. Yeah, that, that would be what I would be looking for. I'd be looking for 500th of a second at 2.8, 3.2, or maybe 3.5 if you could do that. The reason I say shoot at 3.5 if you can is that's going to give you more leeway with your focus. Um, okay, because these guys all have cages on, so uh, it's not always the easiest thing to focus on the face. So the chest is a good place in hockey uh, because usually when they're skating towards you, 
the chest and the face are kind of in the same focal plane. So at 3.2, 3.5, you're going to get a better chance of getting the chest and the face all in focus when they're coming towards you. What focusing modes are you going to be using? Uh, probably spot. spot Conti focus. Continuous yeah. or single? Uh, continuous for hockey. All right, yeah. continuous. And which of the focus modes are you going to select? You said single or you said, yeah. you said spot. What do you mean by spot? Uh, as far as I know, it's the spot on the uh, dial for my camera. I'm not sure. Is it the single one, the single box, or the box with other boxes around it? It's the single box. All right. Um, have you gotten into the dynamic focus at all? Continuous. I don't think I have. All right. Do you have your camera with you, real quick? Uh, one second. Yeah, take sure. that because I want to. I want to. Um, <laughs> we want to get this right. So basically, there's single focus. Uh, sorry, in continuous focus, there's that spot focus, which is like one area that you can focus. Um, then there's the dynamic area focus. All right, let's see the back of the camera. Which mode do you have it tied into? I can't see. To the left, oh, to the other yeah, side. Uh, which mode do I have it tied in? It's the single box. Well, let me see. 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 Let me see the, the button on the back. Yeah, hold that still. Hold that still. Uh, okay. Have you ever yeah. had trouble with your focus tracking? Um, not really. Well, I guess a little bit, but I never noticed it. Do you know why? Why is that? Because in this mode, as a subject moves out of that box, say you have the box to the, the middle, you're shooting in the middle, right? Yes. If the person's focused in the middle and then they cut to the left and they jump to another focusing point, your focus won't track them in that single focus, in that spot focus point. Go to that second okay. one, that's dynamic focus. Okay. So show, show that Let's... again. Hold it up to the screen so everybody can see it. Um, hold a little closer, a little closer. All right, right there. Now we're on dynamic focus. That is a, a dot, a square with a dot up, top, bottom, uh, right, and left. What, what that means is in dynamic focus is that if a subject moves from left to right all the way to the other side of the focusing points, they move around the focus will shift. The camera is going to take information from all those focusing points to make sure that that guy is going to track. Okay. All right, so now go into your menu system because there's another yep. thing to look at. Are you in the focus part of your menu system? Auto focus, yep. Um, what options do you see in there? Uh, dynamic is 51. Okay, dynamic 51. Then you should have one that says 9, and then you should have one that says 3D. Yep, there's 51 3D tracking. Right. I don't use 3D tracking myself. I don't like it because okay. it could focus in on the foot if that foot is the closest thing to the camera. Um, right. 51 points may be too many. What's the one under that? 20 something? 21. Yeah, yep, 21. Uh, 21 and 9, right? Yeah, correct. So 21 and 9 are kind of the ones that I stick to. A lot of the times, 9. What that means is when you've picked, say, we'll pick the center focusing point. All right? We're in dynamic focus now. So you pick the center focusing point. Um, what's going on here is that if you leave it on nine, it's going to take a reading from the nine focusing points or the eight focusing points surrounding that ninth one in the middle because you have 51 focusing points in the D700. So it's yep. taking information from all of those and it's going to track your subject all the way through there. And then if they move, it's going to keep following them through there. Um, does, it, does this make sense or is this too? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I would try nine or okay. 21. 51 is too many. So what, what would happen in 51 is if they're skating towards you and you really, you know, you have your focusing box up top, but then like the foot, the knee, the stick or something gets closer to the camera, it may shift the focus to that area. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why I leave it on 9 or 21 when doing action and I leave it on the um, that second box that you selected, the one with all the dots around it, opposed yeah. to the one that's just single focus, because that one, if you hit the info button, the one, uh, not the info button, you hit the um, question mark that pops up. For the... I don't know if the 700 has the question mark on the side. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at it now. Now, go on the single, and does, does it tell you what that one, that focus point means? Uh, for the single... Yeah, I'm not sure for that part. 
I didn't right. have to find it in the menu. All right, not a big deal. But for, yeah. for shooting sports and action, you want to be between the nine focusing points or the 21. I think 51 goes way too far, and I don't like 3D okay. because I've always had trouble um, with 3D. I tried cause it you, once, and it didn't work for me either. Well, yeah, you watch the jumping box go yeah, around and around and around, yeah. and it seems to miss more often than not. So those are the things. We've talked about focusing. We talk about uh, setting your – setting your um your your exposure uh yes. action shots do you know what you're looking for uh anything yeah shooting uh stopping obviously with the goalie and uh full frame shots yeah here, get here's some recommendations you said you have a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200 right yes so when you're when you're um say you're at the 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 left face off dot the left face off circle facing into the okay. net, all right? So that means he's halfway between the goal line and the blue line. Um, there's a lot of action that goes on in front of the net. So you can do a bunch of different things. With the 24 to 70, you can get the guy setting up in front of the net. You've got a defender there. You have a goalie there. You've got a guy standing in front of the net getting the crap beat out of him, trying to deflect pucks or screen the goalie. So there's a lot of action going on in front of the net. If you can get all of that in one frame, that makes for a good shot. You, so you could do it wider. Then you can do it even tighter with a 70 to 200. But just when it comes to sports, for me, it's find as much action as possible that you can get. As many people that you can have in one frame, that's going to make for a better image. But also you can look for the tighter shots as guys are going around the circles because circles mm -hmm. are it. I mean, because that's when they're on their edges. When they pass you, I wouldn't shoot pictures of their back. When they're shooting and their back is to you, I wouldn't shoot pictures of them shooting that way either. Um, that would make for I'm just turning my I'm turning my screen here because the sun keeps popping in. <laughs> so um, yeah, I I wouldn't turn shoot players as they're skating away, but look for that action in front of the net. If you could get like three, four, five different athlete you know players in a in a picture, there's a lot of action going on there. Those look really cool. Okay. All right, and then. If you're going to shoot players standing still, don't be afraid to drop your shutter speed, drop your ISO, but most of the time you're going to be trying to shoot action as much as possible. Don't overshoot. Don't hold down the motor drive too long. Quick bursts, one, two shots. If the goalie is going to go down into a butterfly or go down and try to make a glove save, boom, 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 you know, two, three quick shots. You got it. Move on. And um, don't be afraid to go vertical. Don't be afraid yeah, to go horizontal. Right. So I think we've covered a lot. How's that? How was that? That was great. Great. That really is, that's going to help a lot. Anything uh, else? Is it better to shoot? Should I, if I have access to a uh, higher up, uh, I don't know, media box? Or you can't see like me that? shaking my head no already. <laughs> yeah. You okay. don't want to shoot too high because when you're shooting up yeah. high, then that's just like a, a boring point of view. Sure. You want the action. You want these guys to look I'm big. Got it. Yeah. When you shoot from up top, you know that everybody looks smaller, so it's not as extreme. But when you're down low, you can get the major action shots of the guys crossing the blue line. I'm a big fan of using subjects. You know, shoot with the 70 to 200 across the blue line, the guys coming into the zone. You've got defenders out of focus, which look great. That draws you into the guy who's in focus as they come into the zone. Look for that action. You know hockey, so you know when the shots are happening. You know what is key action and that's what you should be looking for uh and then just try to capture it wow great okay. and when are you shooting uh january 7th all right so after your photo shoot and when i get back from vegas because i'll be in vegas the 8th through the 12th let's okay. put together a set and let's do a critique of your hockey shoot oh, i'd love to do that all right so don't forget to send me an email to my main email address absolutely all right Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have fun. Enjoy shooting hockey. It's one of the best sports on earth to play, watch, right. and photograph. Great. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good one. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.